Hello everyone and welcome to round 13 of the 2018 Candidates Tournament uh, with a game uh, between Fabiano Caruana and Levon Aronian. Now I don't have any photos uh, of this game unfortunately because the game ended rather quickly. Uh, only 4 hours, not the usual 6 or 7 hours, so Nikki probably uh, didn't have a chance to upload them. Uh, but uh, let's just remember, here are the final standings uh, after round 12. Uh, we have Karakin in first place and Karyuana sharing first place with 7, seven points. Uh, and Aronian uh, with 4 points uh, in, is in last place. Uh, so, uh, this game doesn't really have that much meaning to, to Levon other, other than maybe... He, maybe he doesn't want to lose, lose rating points anymore, uh, but it definitely could mean uh, the difference between winning the candidates and not winning the candidates, the Fabiano Caruana. Uh, so let's see this game. Uh, Fabi opens with e4, uh, we have e5, uh, knight to f3, knight to c6, and bishop to b5. So the Rui Lopez. Uh, a6, Morphe's defense, uh, bishop to a4, uh, knight to f6, uh, castles, bishop to e7, rook to e1, and b5. All standard theory, uh, bishop to b3, uh, castles, now d3, d6, this is still all, uh, all already seen like a lot of times. Uh, bishop to d2, uh, and now bishop to g4. Uh, c3. Uh, d5 and now we have h3 <coughs> attacking the bishop. Bishop to h5 and queen to e2. Uh, rook to b8. Uh, bishop to g5 and now d captures on e4. d captures on e4 and now h6. Uh, bishop back to c1. Uh, bishop to g6 and now knight b to d2. And you'll see uh, knight b to d2, okay, uh, guarding d4 pawn. And uh, the bishop on g6, it seems like a very active piece, uh, but you'll see later in the game how much trouble will uh, Levin have. For having this bishop on g6. Uh, knight to h5 now, preparing to jump to f4 with, with the knight. Uh, first knight to f1, uh, remaneuvering, bishop to c5 and now g3, not allowing the knight to come uh, to f4. Uh, king to h7, simply improving as this pawn can never move since there's a bishop on b3. So first king to h7, improving the position, also f5 will be an idea in the future. And uh, Fabiano also improves king to g2 as the bishop it's slicing all the way here, uh, maybe in the future knight captures on g3 would be an idea. Now, it wasn't at the moment because there's a knight on f1, uh, but, you know, b better improve it immediately. Uh, queen to e7 and the bishop to c2 now. Uh, we have uh, rook to d8 uh, and the b4. Uh, we have bishop to b6, now comes a4 and knight to f6. And here knight to h4. And now you can see uh, how weird the position of this bishop on g6 is. Uh, it can't really go anywhere. This knight will capture it at one point. Then black will have to ruin his pawn structure. Uh, it's unlikely you will, you will want to capture with the king on g6. Uh, so queen to e6. And uh, first, before capturing on g6, although capturing on g6 immediately is definitely an idea, uh, Levon doesn't really have a lot in this position. He wants to play queen to c4, uh, maybe exchange queens here. But uh, first, before capturing uh, the bishop, Fabiano improves the position, bishop to d3, uh, he doesn't allow the queen to come to uh, to come to c4, uh, also now b captures on a4 doesn't really work that well because the bishop will also be eyeing the a6 pawn. Uh, and here Levin plays bishop to h5, he avoids this uh, trade for a, a bishop for a knight uh, with uh, the idea uh, this is basically one big bluff. Uh, he wants Fabiano to move his queen, and uh, if he moves his queen, then then Levin's position would definitely be okay. Uh, but here Fabiano calls his bluff, and he plays g4, and uh, this was Levin's idea. Uh, he plays bishop captures on g4, h captures on g4, and knight captures on g4. So it is a it is a piece sacrifice. Although he did grab two piece uh, two pawns for the piece, so it's it's not that uh, that severe. Uh, knight to f5 now, this is definitely the best move, uh, blocking the queen from uh, from entering the position near the white king and uh, preparing, some, uh, preparing some ideas. Uh, knight captures on f2, this was well expected, uh, now grabbing a third pawn for the piece, but uh, here comes the problem. Uh, bishop to c2, uh, first moving the bishop as the, both uh, the knight and the rook were attacking the bishop on d3, uh, and now g6. Uh, attacking uh, Fabi's knight on f5. 
And now if you if you play a move like knight back to e3, okay, now you block the bishop, there definitely is a threat of queen captures on f2, uh, but now black has this knight to h3 move, the knight is well protected by the queen, and uh, there's the threat of knight to f4, uh, white, would, white wouldn't really have uh, a lot of fun here. Uh, so, after this g6 move, Fabi plays knight uh, 1 to e3, uh, he temporarily gives up a piece, but he will win the, the f2 knight, so it's not a big, big deal. Uh, G captures on f5, we have E captures on f5, and now uh, the the only move for black, uh, which Levin finds it, uh, queen to f6. And uh, queen to f6 is uh, is a start of a, an interesting variation, uh, but you'll see what I mean by this. Uh, queen captures on f2 was played, so uh, Fabi is still up a piece now, uh, and here uh, Levin played e4. He played e4 uh, with the idea of opening up here the attack uh, to the c3 pawn by the queen, uh, but more importantly of making the room uh, on e5 for this knight. So the knight will come to e5, and the bishop is nice, nicely placed on b6, and this rook is coming to g8. Uh, but this move is actually a mistake, as you'll see in the game. The correct way to play this was actually knight captures on b4. Uh, and now, if you don't capture the knight, uh, then... sorry. Uh, if you don't capture the knight, the knight is coming to d3 with an attack on the rook, on the queen. Uh, white will have to capture it, black will recapture it with the rook and then put the other rook on the d-file. And uh, by having doubled rooks on the, on the d-file, Aronian would definitely have uh, plenty of compensation for, for, for the piece. Uh, but, uh, if you of course capture the knight with c capture some b4, uh, then you get rook to d4. Uh, now the rook is... Uh, nicely controlling uh, this square here. This other rook is now coming to g8, uh, and now this would this would be definitely okay uh, for black. But uh, you, you have to find this d4 move. Uh, Arian didn't find this, so after queen captures on f2, he played e4. Uh, but now this doesn't work. Here, Fabi plays rook to h1. Uh, bishop captures on e4 uh, is the best move. It's the engine stop choice, but that's just. Uh, uh, the engine showing off that it can grab a pawn and still continue playing this game. Uh, Fabi doesn't need to show off; he just wants to. He just wants to win this game. Uh, rook to h1 was played. Uh, now rook to d6, uh, preparing to, to bring more defenders uh, to the h6 pawn. Uh, and only now Fabi plays a bishop captures on e4 uh, on, on e4 as now there's time. Uh, rook to g8 check, king to f1, and now comes knight to e5. And it seems like. Uh, black really does have uh, a lot of pieces surrounding the black king, the white king, uh, but queen to f4, Fabi, Fabi plays the strongest move, and uh, now what do you do here? Uh, you don't really, you don't really have a good move here for black. Uh, in the game, c6 was played uh, by Aronian, which is indeed uh, the engine's top choice, so you can't complain about him making a, a move like c6. Uh, but uh, here, instead of uh, uh, here, rook captures on h6 is a forced win, uh, with the idea that after rook captures on h6, queen captures on h6. Now you have f6 check, uh, a discovered check from the bishop. Now, if you move the king, of course you can't move it to g7. The pawn is blocking, uh, the pawn is covering the g7 square. So if you move the king, simply queen captures queen will be checkmate. Okay, we can just see that this is a very nice checkmate. Uh, so after f6, you would have to block it. Rook to g6. Uh, and now comes uh, queen captures on h6. Uh, you have to capture with the king, the rook is pinned. King captures and now uh, knight to c4 check. Uh, not, not, not knight to f5 check, which seems like it's basically the same thing. You're going to pick up the rook, but it's not. Uh, after king to h5, and now after you capture it, you get rook captures uh, on f6 with check. And now you're going to pick up the knight on d6. So knight would have to block and now you have king to g4 and now you're going to win two pieces for a rook. Uh, so after white makes a move, simply captures, 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 and uh, you would have three pawns against four pawns, and white would be out of the exchange, but, you know, white would have a very hard time winning this. Uh, so, uh, basically, after this, king captures on h6, uh, you play knight to c4, check. Now open up a discover check from the bishop here, uh, and now it's winning. King moves, and now because the king is on a light square, uh, simply bishop captures on g6, this is with check. King captures, and now you capture rook on d6, and now you are up a whole rook, easily winning the game. So, after this c6 by Aronian, uh, rook captures on h6 was definitely winning. I'm, I'm pretty sure uh, Fabi should have seen this. Uh, but uh, first he played a captures on b5, uh, seemingly improving the position instead of 
play, playing the finishing blow. Uh, but maybe this is now just Fabi showing off. Uh, he's maybe saying the, my position is so well uh, that it doesn't matter if it, I can even capture a pawn on the other side of, uh, on the other side of the board where nothing is happening. Uh, there's still nothing you can do here. Uh, so. Uh, Rook to g5, not even caring about the pawn, uh, Aryan tries to improve his position, maybe uh, take something here uh, that uh, that maybe Fabi missed, like the rook h6 idea. Uh, but here Fabi plays uh, pawn captures on a6, so grabbing another pawn and now creating a, a beautiful passed pawn here on the queen side. So not only does he have a better position, now he has a passed a6 pawn on the queen side. Uh, here uh, queen to d8 was played by Levon. Uh, and here comes f6 check. Uh, what do you do here? Knight to g6 blocking. Uh, and now finally Fabi played rook captures on h6. And it was in this position that Levon Aronian resigned the game. Uh, why did he resign? Uh, well, obviously, if you capture the rook, then you get queen to h2 check. Uh, rook has to block, rook h5. And now comes knight to g4. And now you have to... This is a double check from the bishop and the knight. Uh, you have to move the king. Queen captures. And after king moves... Uh, bishop captures on g6. This is uh, this is uh, completely winning. Uh, you do have to calculate a couple of checks. For example, rook d1, king g2. Now rook g1, uh, king h2. But now after queen to c7, uh, you have simply queen to e5, blocking check, and white is simply winning here. Uh, rook captures, queen captures, bishop captures with check, king h3, rook check, king h4, and. Uh, it's all over. White is up a piece uh, and up two pawns, and F and Fabi does have uh, a passed a6 pawn on the queen side, so no no point in in uh, even trying something here. Uh, and another thing is, um, after this uh, rook captures on h6, uh, you don't really have the option of declining this. Uh, if you, for example, move king to g8, uh, then you get queen captures on g5, uh, rook captures on f6, uh, but uh, you don't really have anything to play here. Okay, maybe. Maybe rook captures on f6 would check, but you simply move the king, uh, and uh, there's really no move here black can make. He's down a whole rook, and okay, it seems like there is this uh, rook to f1 check, kind of checking the king and winning the queen on g5, uh, but unfortunately after knight captures on f1, the bishop is guarding the queen, so not, not, nothing happening there. Uh, white is again simply crushing this position. So after uh, rook captures on h6, uh, Aronian resigned the game, and now Fabi, uh, I don't know uh, about all the standings because uh, not all of the games have finished, uh, Kramnik's game against uh, Ding is still uh, going on, uh, but uh, I did I did see that uh, Karakin uh, drew his game against Wesley so uh, rather quickly, so now it's actually Fabiano uh, who is uh, in the lead again, uh, half a point, uh, half a point uh, ahead of... Uh, ahead of Karekin, and uh, I will show one more game, the one uh, Mamidaro versus Grishchuk, so by then probably the Kramnik Ding game will, will, will be finished, and I will also show you the final standings and the pairings for the final round tomorrow. So yeah, uh, that's the game, uh, a tough game for Levon Aryan, a brilliant game by Fabi, uh, you know, what, what a way to, to come back after, after losing that uh, game against Karekin, and uh, yeah, I mean... Not 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 the greatest tournament for <laughs> for Levon. And uh, yesterday, uh, I, I think I think I saw today that uh, he actually dropped below uh, the, the the world's top ten chess players uh, in the live ratings list. Uh, but that's to be expected. He like lost all of the games. So yeah, uh, that's the game. I do hope you enjoyed it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, uh, and I will see you soon uh, with another game from the candidates. Like I said, uh, the the Mamidaro Grishchu game, and hopefully with some nice photos uh, from Nikki. Uh, thank you all, and I will see you soon.